So on to our next measurement. Well, one of the big three for alignment measurements of your caster, your toe, and your camber is camber. Now, camber is something that can cause various problems. One of them is the wear on the side of the tire. So here's your condition, a possible scenario. One tire, one side of the tire, I should say, is wearing much more than the other. Now, there could be other causes for that, but one big possible cause is a camber being off. So if you have some camber wear on the inside of the tire, you need to make sure you're not having an issue with camber. So what is camber exactly? Let's move some tools out of our way and talk about camber and toe simply with a pair of shoes. So I have a pair of boots here with pretty flat soles. If I walk with my feet flat down and the soles are worn evenly, I won't be walking on the sides, the outside sides of my shoes or the inside. So I won't have negative camber or positive camber. So that's what camber is. It's basically like walking on the insides or the outside of your shoe's soles. Not only is that not comfortable for you, that's not good for shoe sole wear. And the same thing for alignment, stability, and camber wear. As we look at these tire wear illustrations left to right, we talked about camber wear and how it can wear one side of the tire compared to another. But a similar type wear, maybe on the side, may not be a camber issue at all, but use your hand to feel the smoothness of the wear. If the wear, if the uneven wear on any particular sector of the tire feels kind of wavy, they call it cupping. And cupping is a classic problem that can occur if you have an irregular uh, mating of the surface of the tire to the road. What does that mean? It means you've got bouncy, bouncy, bounce going on. You've got dampers, you've got struts or shocks that are worn out, and that car is just bouncing up and down like a clown's car in a circus. So when that happens, or in some cases even severe wheel balance issues, you'll have cupping. That's in the center. Now, over towards your far right, the illustration shows the underinflation. Now, if that car's tire has an underinflated tire, it's supposed to be, we'll say, 38 PSI, it's 28 PSI. You're going to have the center of the tire kind of crease in, pull, pucker up, and the outsides of the tire are applying more to the road. So more of the weight of the vehicle is applied unevenly to the outside sides of the tire, making them wear out. Now, that can also be due to cornering. Hard cornering can occur on both sides of the tire as well. If you have overinflation, just the opposite of what you see in that illustration on the far right, overinflation will wear out the inside of the tire where because the tire is not compressing, it's got, let's say, 42 PSI, it should have 32 PSI, and now we've got a tire, not only is it going to be a lot warmer in danger of blowout, as well as an underinflated tire can also get warm and blow out. We have a tire that has the raised rib of the very center making more contact with the road, therefore wearing the middle, the inside of the tread out faster than the outsides of the tread. Just the opposite of what you're seeing there with underinflation.